All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Alyssa Martinez. I'm an assistant director of admission here at Northwestern University. We're really excited to have you all tonight for the rural student panel. I'm joined today by three current students who are here to share a little bit more about their experience as rural students with you all tonight. So with that being said, I do have some questions that I'm going to ask them, but I really encourage you all to drop your questions in the chat. We will be monitoring that chat and answering those questions live. So please, please, please do not be shy about that. And I think just to kick us off, I will have the panelists go around and introduce themselves. We can start with Amanda, go to Jasmine, and then end with Maria, and then we'll kick off the panel. So without further ado, Amanda. Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda, and I use she, her pronouns. I'm a third year in the McCormick School of Engineering, majoring in industrial engineering, minoring in data science and engineering, and then also pursuing a certificate in managerial analytics through the Kellogg School of Management. And I am from Manaka, Wisconsin, which is a really small town in the northern part of the state. And one thing I'm involved in at Northwestern is swim club. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine. I use she, they pronouns. I am a current junior in the McCormick School of Engineering studying chemical engineering. Um, I am from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, which is the only city in the entire state. Um, and something that I'm involved in um, is also the Knit Western, which is a um, knitting and crocheting yarn arts club, which makes items to be donated. Hi everyone, my name is Maria, I use she, her pronouns. I'm in the Medill School of Journalism, majoring in Journalism and International Studies with a minor in Business Institutions. Um, I'm from Atkinson, New Hampshire, which is a very small town in the state. And when I am not on panels or doing tours, I am involved in Northwestern News Network, which is our broadcast station on campus. Awesome. Thank you all for introducing yourselves again. So, so excited to have you all here to share your perspectives um, and experiences at Northwestern. So the first question I'm going to ask y'all is what is one way that you prepared for the transition for college? Amanda, starting with you and then snaking through Jasmine and then Maria. Yeah, so something small I did before I came to college was watch all the YouTube videos on the Northwestern admissions page. I kind of had a lot of fun with that and was scrolling through the different playlists trying to find applicable things to me just to ease my nerves before college. Um, but once I really got here, the main thing that kind of helped me transition was definitely Wildcat Welcome, which is our week for first year students. Only first year students are on campus and they get to learn about different resources and get acquainted to campus. So that was something really helpful to me because you're placed into a group called um, a group under your peer advisor, your PA group, um, and that your peer advisor is an upperclassman student and they will help you connect to campus resources and also help you register for classes. So I think overall just having my peer advisor as a resource was something that really helped my transition to college. Um, yeah, kind of continuing along that line. Um, I binge watched a current now former students um, videos on all of the dorms on campus um, as a way to like get excited and prepare myself for like ranking all of the dorms to choose my housing with my roommate. Um, I also joined all of like the group me group chats, um, which were really active because it was 2020 and that was kind of the only way we could socialize with each other. Um, and then once I got to com campus, um, I applied to a um, mentoring program through Student Enrichment Services, which provides assistance and resources to first-generation, low-income, undocumented, and DACA students. Um, and that program was called Compass, and um, it really helped me um, find a group of people on campus, um, although we're meeting on Zoom, um, who were kind of from similar backgrounds um, and just connect me to other people beyond like just my PA group. Yeah, very similarly, I just perused the internet and looked for similar backgrounds and identities that I identified with that I could continue and have a group there on campus. I looked through Wildcat Connection, which is um, Northwestern's database of all different clubs and organizations. So I kind of thought that I wanted to stick with some of my high school activities just to make college just a little bit easier and smoother of a transition from all those high school activities I was doing and resuming them in college. So that definitely really helped me. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. I'm sure we have some 
ED admits on the call who are super excited to hear about that and who will be taking some of those tips and tricks that you all shared. The second question I have for y'all is how did you connect with resources and support once on campus? So like I said, with my peer advisor group, my peer advisor was a really great resource for us. So right off the bat, he would give us different academic resources, social resources, just normal transition to college, studying resources, literally anything you could think of, you could always go to him with a question if there was something that he didn't cover. And so that I'd say is like the biggest thing that connected me to campus, but also something specific to McCormick is that you will be given a first year advisor in the engineering school. And this person is someone that you could go to for anything, even outside of academics. And so my first year advisor was absolutely amazing. She always met with me before every registration period and made sure that I was all set to register. And we'd make plan A, plan B, plan C for any kind of schedule conflicts that I might have. So that was really reassuring as well. Um, something also that I've gotten more involved in with on campus is NCA, which stands for Northwestern Career Advancement. So this is kind of our career center and they will help you with um, resume writing, mock interviews, if you need interview clothes, they're always there for you um, in terms of anything pre-professional you might need on campus. Similarly to Amanda, again, um, I use my advisor a lot. Um, I'm also in McCormick. And so my first year advisor was really helpful um, with also creating a whole bunch of plans for classes and also starting to figure out my four year plan. Um, I also um, was very active with Compass, the mentoring program, and um, my Compass mentor was very uh, very helpful with connecting me to on-campus health resources, particularly um, those in CAPS, which is like Counseling and Psychological Services, um, as well as Student Health Services. Um, and uh, they both connected me um, with a bunch of different academic support, as well as um, mental health and physical health support and resources, and also connected me to other students who were also um, low income and first generation. And so they then connected me to other resources as well, um, just through word of mouth and group chats and just connecting people to information. Um, and so just finding students who were from similar backgrounds also connected me to different resources and they were also a support to me as well. I think I was just really surprised during orientation week just how responsive all of um, the resources and academic advisors are on campus. For the Medill School of Journalism, my academic advisor reached right out in the summer. And then right when I came on campus for orientation week, we got to meet with them and talk. And um, I think just like Amanda and Jasmine both said, they just connect you to different routes. So when I wanted to find a job on campus or when I wanted to search for um, different internship opportunities, opportunities they knew other people to connect me with. So just very responsive, um, for sure. Lovely. Thank you all so much for sharing. Now you touched on a little bit um, about like your advising experience, but we got a great question in the chat. So how did you adjust to larger, a larger campus and larger classes? Can you talk a little bit more about your experience with that? We can start with Maria this time and then just go backwards if that works. My hometown is smaller than Northwestern's universe, like population overall. Um, so I think that was a really daunting like statistic when before I came on campus. But I think just finding like those different groups that keep you grounded. For me, it's been like my faith community at the Shield Catholic Center. That's just been one point where I've been able to connect with other people. Um, but yeah. Uh, similarly to Maria, technically I am from the only city in the state, um, but I actually live outside of it. And so um, I'm from an unincorporated area with an unknown population. Um, and honestly, I'm still adjusting a little bit to having people. A lot of what I do, I stay in Evanston a lot. Um, I know a lot of people really like to go into downtown Chicago on weekends throughout the quarter. And I found that by limiting my exposure to just hordes of people, really helps me um, kind of stay mindful and be more grounded in the experience because I am not used to that many people. 
And despite it being my third year here, it's a lot of people and it's really overwhelming. So just kind of limiting my exposure um, to overwhelming situations helps a lot. And similarly to Maria, my faith community at the Shield Catholic Center has been really grounding and a place where um, we all share a similar identity. And it's a much smaller community than the general broader um, campus community. And that helps kind of give me a little piece of home and remind me of that. Yeah, very similar to Maria. My town is half the size of Northwestern's undergraduate population. So it's very cool to be here. I absolutely love it. It's just a different environment, which I really enjoy. Um, I think I'd touch on like the class sizes, you know, when you're a first year student, maybe even second year, you're going to be in some of the introduction sequences with maybe larger class sizes. But something that's really helped me is that I didn't even know existed are office hours and discussion sections. So for classes with a certain threshold over a certain amount of students, um, they're required to have a discussion section, which usually meets once a week. And it's just a group of students, usually about 10, 15 students that meet with a TA. And there's no new course content taught in this class. It's literally just reviewing what you did for the week in the big lecture section. And it just gives you an opportunity to ask questions and bounce ideas off your peers, which has really been helpful. And then also, in addition, all professors and teaching assistants hold office hours. So those are really great, too. They're weekly, many times that work for different people. And those are just a great way, you know, to meet your professor one on one, get acquainted with your teaching assistants and really get that support and also bond with other students in office hours. If someone sitting next to you has the same problem, sometimes you can bounce ideas off of each other and work it out. And it's just super fun and a great way to meet people as well. Awesome, thank you for sharing. We're getting some really, really good questions in that chat. So please, please, please keep them coming. I'm gonna probably pull the rest of the questions from the chat, so that's all really exciting. So the next question um, that is a little bit related to what you all have been talking about a little bit is, it sounds like there are a lot of resources to help new students, but was imposter syndrome real for anyone on the panel? If so, what resources did you utilize to overcome? Maria, do you want to take that one? Sure, I'll start. Um, very short answer, yes. Um, definitely very real when I got to Northwestern, just kind of hearing where people are from and hearing that a lot of people are from bigger cities was really intimidating at first. Um, but I guess kind of just to cope with this imposter syndrome, I found those communities in my journalism publications. Um, so I mentioned I'm on Northwestern News Network, our broadcast station, where I've just been able to find a lot of upperclassmen mentors who really just want to help you learn and grow. It's not so much as to like where you're from and what you're background is like that's all very important but um at the end of the day like you're at northwestern for a reason and you worked really hard um and everyone's kind of there to like help you along that academic journey in um, whatever capacity that may be i can go next um so my situation is a little unique because there's usually one of us from the entire state of South Dakota um, who attend Northwestern every year. Um, my year, there's two of us, but we didn't know each other. Um, so it was kind of isolating um, because my state has less than a million people and they send like one of us a year. Um, and so one of the ways that I helped kind of combat I, um, imposter syndrome, um, which really hit hard also because it was like, do I really belong here? I'm fr I'm from my, there's like one of us. Um, and was I supposed to be the one from my state who goes here? Um, and so one of the ways that I kind of um, uh, dealt with imposter syndrome and kind of combated it was just finding small ways to succeed in like non-academic ways. Um, so like um, completing a project in Newt Western and successfully donating scarves um, to be given to service workers. Um, and like finding communities to belong to that were both academic and non-academic. Um, so finding groups of friends in my major has really helped because we all struggle together. And so um, finding communities where we struggle very similarly, especially like academically, um, has really helped so, like collaborating with my classmates on homework problems and realizing that we're all struggling and we're all not doing great um, on learning it. And uh, just finding other, finding communities where I can feel 
that I belong both academically and non-academically and finding non-academic ways to succeed has really helped me. Yeah, I can say for me that I definitely came in with imposter syndrome. I still sometimes struggle with it. But what really helps me is to realize that like, I'm not the only one feeling this way on this campus. Um, and something specific that's really been helpful for me is my major industrial engineering. Every Tuesday, we have like a little get together in the IE computer lab put on by our advisors. And that's just an hour of our time. So we can get together, we can talk about what's going on for the week, what we're stressed about, what we're excited about. And that really has just helped me, you know, connect with my advisors as well as meet friends within my major who are taking some of the same classes as me and also feel the same way. And honestly, I can say through that, like I have met so many great friends in my major. And every time that I go to class and we have to form groups for a group project, I always know who to go to, but I'm also willing to branch out and meet other people. Um, and just having a support system and being able to openly talk about how you're feeling for the week and if you're stressed or not, and being able to, you know, have that open open communication with people in your major has really helped me understand that I'm not alone and some of the people are feeling the exact same ways. Um, and I will also say that as a first year undergrad in the engineering school, there are a lot of courses that you will take that are group focused and group project based focused. Um, and so that's something that I really liked as well. It just helped me connect with other people and we kind of clicked on our different feelings for the week and that helped as well with meeting people and feeling like you're not alone. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So one thing that just keeps coming up a bunch in the chat is concerning campus safety. So how safe does campus feel for you all? Can you talk a little bit more about your experience on our Evanston campus? And we can start with Amanda this time and then go to Jasmine and then Maria. Yeah, I feel super safe on the Northwestern campus. Honestly, I've never really had a problem with walking around. I think it's always been very safe. Um, for example, walking late at night, I usually try to bring a buddy with me, but I don't ever feel alone. We do have some safety practices in place. For example, we have a Go Guardian app that you can get on your phone, which will send your location to a friend. And if you don't make it within a certain time to your destination, it'll alert your friend. We also have a blue light system on campus. And then my personal favorite is we have something called Safe Ride, which is like a personal Uber for Northwestern students that is completely free. So if you're ever somewhere on campus and it's at night and you want to get somewhere else, you can just call up the free Uber. It'll pick you up and <laughs> bring you back to your destination. So that's something that's been really helpful for me. Uh, like Amanda, I also feel really safe on campus. It also helps that Evanston is much smaller than Chicago, um, which really helps um, make it feel a lot safer. Everything's also really well lit, especially Sheridan Road, which is kind of the main thoroughfare of campus or the main road that goes along campus. Um, if it's super late, I can also call a safe ride or I can take the bus as well. Um, there's a CTA or Chicago Transit Authority bus that runs along Sheridan Road and campus. There's also um, three different kinds of shuttle buses that run um, between the two campuses in Chicago and Evanston, the intercampus, as well as there's like a campus loop that just goes around campus um, and the Evanston loop, which goes more into like downtown Evanston, which is really nice if you live off of campus um, that you can take to access, like go to your apartment from campus later at night. Um, it's also just kind of been a new experience getting used to being able to walk everywhere because like back home that didn't exist. Um, I lived like five miles from the nearest house and um, the bus system doesn't really exist in my hometown. Um, and so I feel like getting to a point where I felt safe taking the bus just because it was a completely new experience um, was kind of hard, but I found the more that like I did it and taking the bus with friends really helps a lot. Um, and like, it's not that it was necessarily dangerous. It was just a completely new thing that existed. Um, and being able to take the train to was, um, it kind of felt unsafe initially because I was so unused to it, but, um, like within Evanston and such, it's really safe. Um, and taking it with friends really helps you like get used to it. 
I think they hit most of the bases, but yeah, during that first week, like the bus was also a big thing for me, Jasmine, um, and just kind of getting used to that and whatnot. I found a friend who is from another small town kind of nearby me in another state, um, but we just kind of like figured it out together and tackled those things together. So it was definitely nice to like stick with friends and, you know, walk with friends around campus. Um, I will say I was very worried about feeling safe, like within my living space. Um, but luckily, like Northwestern has like a three lock system where not only your dorm will be locked, but also the hall. And then you can only access your room via like your own wild card. Oh, I'll hold it up to the yeah, but your student ID. So um, it just helps to know that everything is like very secure and locked. And actually recently, a lot of our academic buildings are locked between specific hours now, um, just as an extra safety precaution. So I feel relatively safe here now, but I was definitely worried coming in. Thank you all for sharing. So the next question reads, what were some ways you were able to replicate the small town feel in Evanston? Amanda, why don't you start us off? For me, I think I we had before I came to Northwestern, like Jasmine was touching on, we had a Wisconsin group me. So I was able to um, have a group chat with other students from Wisconsin. And, you know, Wisconsin does have a couple of different cities, but the majority of people from Wisconsin that I've found out that are here are from rural areas. So it was kind of nice to be able to connect from students within my state. And actually one of those students is one of my best friends and we're living together next year. So maybe we'll, we'll host some kind of Wisconsin dinner parties or something. But I think just, you know, having that commonality and being able, being able to find a little bit of home in other people here has really helped with that. Unfortunately, unlike Amanda, um, there were two of us from the entire state of South Dakota. Um, and it's not very often that like I end up like coming upon the other students from South Dakota. I think I've met the sophomore um, from South Dakota and um, the other student in my year from South Dakota. We didn't know each other going in, um, so we couldn't really like have a bunch of a group chat. Um, we like talked on like social media a lot in the beginning um, just to like have someone that understood what it was like coming from the state um, because although it is also rural, um, it's a very different environment um, from like other rural areas because it's a different state um, and we don't have any big cities in the state, which is um, not weird, but like it's a very new experience um, like coming to an area. So um, finding communities that shared identities with me, um, I've talked about this a lot before, um, but like growing up, like my faith was super important to me. And so finding a faith community on campus um, where I felt really comfortable was um, really important to me to like find um, kind of like the experience of home with me. Um, and so like that was really important and that's what um, kind of helped me find a familiar place because like I didn't have to um, necessarily bring anything to the table. It was just like, show up, you belong here. You have the same faith. Awesome. You're good to go kind of a thing. Very similar to Jasmine. I believe there is only one of me in the second year class from New Hampshire. So it was definitely um, an identity kind of questioning thing to say the least. Um, but aside from that, finding home here, I was really involved in school board politics back at home um, and I'm a journalism major. So that kind of translated by covering the Evanston school board um, just for fun because I kind of missed that piece um, in local politics and whatnot. Um, I guess just like a key thing that I really realized after my first year was that Evanston is your community too. Like Northwestern is definitely, you know, sits in a city, um, but Evanston has so many different things to explore, like their local government, um, just like local community service groups too. So that was definitely like an exciting way to kind of like get involved and feel connected to a town. Awesome, thank you all for sharing. Um, the next question is, what lesson would you share with your former self? Now, this time, let's really switch it up. Let's start with Jasmine, then go Amanda, and then go Maria. That's a hard one. Um, I think something I would share with my former self um, is that 
it's not linear. Um, like succeeding in college is not linear. Um, finding out who I am outside of my family unit and outside of my state is not linear. And it's not going to be a straight path. I feel like I had this really optimistic um, expectation of what college would be. And it was not that. I mean, it it really didn't help that, like, I started college in fall of 2020 and they canceled housing on us two weeks before we were supposed to move in. Um, and so I feel like it's been it's been a bumpy ride. But knowing that it would have been, I think, probably would have helped. Um, but also, I found like a lot of resources on campus to help me kind of navigate that. Um, and just like, I think it's going to be OK. It's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride. It's not going to be linear. It's not going to be perfect. But that's what college is. That's kind of the whole idea of it. That's what figuring out who you are and um, I guess growing up is, honestly. Something I'd tell myself is it's definitely okay to do nothing. Like sometimes it's totally fine to do nothing. And that's something that I've really had to learn once I came to college because, you know, you have your class schedule. Then sometimes you want to build in time to eat at the dining hall with your friends. You want to build in time to go exercise. You have club meetings. You want to do your assignment before office hours the next day. Like sometimes it can just become a little bit overwhelming. And sometimes I just get into a routine and be like, I have to do this. I have to go to this. But what I would tell myself is it's going to be fine. Just take a step back. If you need to take a day for yourself, if you have to cancel lunch with a friend because you want to take a nap or you just want to de-stress, that's totally fine. Like in college, you have so much flexibility and so much freedom. And that's I definitely did not know exactly how much free time I would be having. And it's up to you what you want to do with your time. So I'd say you really need to just prioritize yourself and also sometimes take a step back when things get too overwhelming. And it's totally fine just to rearrange your schedule, not even have a schedule for a day. Sometimes just wake up and be like, okay, what's in store for the day? Um, just taking a step back and just realizing that it does work out and you don't have to be on the constant 24 seven grind. It's all going to be fine. Yeah, that's definitely true. I relate to that, Amanda. Um, I think if I were to go back and tell myself anything, I would just tell myself to own it um, within like the context of kind of like the rural communities and talking about that. I would be meeting people. And I think this really came from a place of like imposter syndrome at heart. But I'd be meeting new people and they'd be like, where are you from? And I'd be like, uh, kind of close to Boston. Um, that's not true. I don't really live that close to Boston. Um, I live near New Ham I'm in New Hampshire. Um, so I think just like, you know, telling myself to own my identity more and just being more comfortable with where I'm from, because, you know, you do belong here at the end of the day. Um, you're a wildcat, just like the people you're meeting. And um, yeah, I would just tell myself to own it. Awesome. Some really, really good advice from you all. So thanks for sharing. Next question is, what were some apprehensions you had prior to coming to Northwestern that ended up surprising you or exceeding your expectations? And I see Maria nodding. So we're going to start with Maria for this one and then go Jasmine and Amanda. Honestly, people are so nice. Um, in New England, I feel like there is just a lot of it was just a different mentality. Um, and I think that people in the Midwest are just very nice, very easygoing, want to help you. Um, one day I was like carrying my Target groceries back to my dorm. I like, dropped everything, everything spilled out like strawberries on the pavement type of look. Um, and this guy who was working in the Target, he came outside and he helped me like pack my groceries back up. So I was just really surprised by the common courtesy and just kind of recognizing each other. Um, but that definitely surprised me during my first year and just in regards to students, professors, and um, just other people who are there to support you along the first year journey, just so kind and willing to help. Um, definitely very surprising. I thought that I was going to be alone in this, but um, no, like everyone's just very kind and wants to help you. Uh, along those same veins, um, although I am from the Midwest, um, I think I was very unused to being around people that would offer help um, just because like I wasn't surrounded by people um, like unless I was at school or something like that. And so just 
so like, I guess the story about this is last fall, um, I was, so I had surgery in August and I was using two crutches at the time and I had a really heavy backpack on and someone was walking along up behind me and apparently they had also been on crutches like last winter and they offered to carry my backpack for like half the length of campus in addition to their own. And so I was really surprised by that offer um, to help me. And it really helped a lot um, because walking across campus was really hard. And so I think also being surrounded by people who are willing to help and um, that help comes in a lot of different ways. And I think I was kind of expecting to go the college journey alone um, being one of two from my state. And at the time coming into college, I didn't know that there would be two of us. I thought I would be the only one. And so just actually being surrounded by people that would want to help. And it was a lot, the campus is a lot less isolating than I thought it would be, which really surprised me. Yeah, I had two things I was kind of apprehensive about. The first being the academic rigor of Northwestern, especially in the engineering school. In high school, I always loved math and science. That is my passion. That's why I decided to apply to the engineering school. But I was just nervous. The imposter syndrome kicked in. I was like, can I do this? I'm a, am I going to be able to make it? And I can honestly say that that has been proven so true. I've totally been fine here with my wonderful um, professors, the people I've met in my major, the people I've met in courses outside of my major, my um, academic advisors, everything worked out. So I wish I could honestly tell my younger self that I can do it. I can be in the engineering school. I can do anything I put to my, my mind here um, and that we have great resources to help you along the way. Um, and then the second thing I was a bit apprehensive about is I was nervous about making friends right off the bat freshman year and just having those friends throughout college and not meeting anyone else. That's kind of how I thought it worked in college. And that's absolutely been proven not true. Um, even as a third year now, I'm making new friends literally at least once a month. Um, so that was, I wish I could go back and tell myself that because I remember being a freshman, especially during orientation week, just like struggling to like find a community and find different groups of friends that I'd spend the next four years with. And I do have friends that I met during orientation week, but it's a long process in college and you just meet friends along the way, which has been great. Great. And sometimes your friends end up being your professors. And so that leads us to our next question, which is, can you tell us a little bit more about the relationships that you've developed with professors? Are faculty approachable? If so, like, how has that been? Um, and then I see Maria nodding. So let's start with Maria again. Yeah, your professors being your friends is like everything, especially like if you can just kind of find like one or two that you really click with or you're just really interested in kind of what they're studying or what they've researched. Like that's definitely been it's made my life a lot easier here. I have one professor um, in the Medill School of Journalism. He was my like video professor. He also like advises our club. So there's kind of like a little bit of overlap. Um, but whenever I have kind of like a professional question about internships or jobs or just like industries but then also like the personal stuff too um like professors are very approachable they want to help you and um they're doing this because like they want to make connections with students and whatnot so they are definitely very helpful but yeah um in my experience starting in the mccormick school of engineering the professors were a little bit unapproachable in the beginning in the sense that like classes were really, really big, especially the introductory engineering analysis courses and the introductory science courses. And so um, the professors seemed unapproachable just because the classes had like 200 people um, or in some cases there were 500 person classes. And so I found the TAs or the teaching assistants who were graduate students a little bit more approachable in the sense that like um, their office hours seemed to be less crowded and um, they were closer to my age, I think. Um, but my experience with like my chemical engineering professors is that they've all been really approachable. Um, it also helps that my chemical engineering classes are like 30 people maximum. Um, one of my classes had seven people in it last winter and it was amazing. And um, so in that sense, you really develop a relationship with your professors. Um, they've also, a lot of them have been really accommodating 
in terms of like when I have to miss class and like making sure I get the notes, um, answering emails a lot. Um, and like professors really go through a lot of effort, especially in the bigger classes to make sure that like you can contact them. Um, so like the biology classes, the intro sequence is massive. There's like 600 students in the first course um, and it's co-taught by two professors. And so they have a joint email um, that both professors have access to. So that way you can just send it. And they're really good about like trying to respond within 24 to 48 hours um, and like making sure that they have office hours a lot of times as well as like a lot of the teaching assistants having a lot of office hours. And so um, they seemed unapproachable at first, um, but now they're like a lot more, they're a lot more approachable than you might think that they are. I'll talk about um, two of my favorite professors that I have here. One of them is actually an industrial engineering advisor. So not as she, not only is she my advisor, she actually has taught some of the classes I've taken. Um, for example, last year when I was a second year, she taught my probability course. And then next quarter, she's actually teaching a client project challenge course that I'm in. So I think like having the bridge between advisor and professor has been really cool for me. Um, also, I just being in her class and, you know, being able to talk a, about stuff with her um, in our meetings just beyond academics has really helped me grow closer to her. Um, and she actually connected me to someone that graduated Northwestern two years ago and is working at the same company that I'm interning in uh, this summer. And it's in a completely different city. And she set up that connection and has made me feel so welcomed um, into the company. And just having that resource has been great. Um, also, uh, she wrote my recommendation letter for the certificate program that I'm in, which is really great. And so just having that connection with someone um, through advising and also through classes has been great. And then my second professor that I wanted to touch on actually teaches one of the Kellogg courses I'm in right now. Um, and what's unique about the certificate program that I'm in is it's for undergrads, but it's taught by Kellogg professors. So if you don't know what Kellogg is, it's our graduate business school and it's located on campus. And so I was having um, trouble with one of my assignments. I had a couple of questions on it. And so I decided to go to my professor's office hours. But what I realized is that his office is in our big graduate school, Kellogg Global Hub. It's so beautiful. It has so much glass windows. It's beautiful. But for me, it was really intimidating because I've never been in there before. And it's full of working professionals who are graduate students. Um, but I decided to go anyways because I think office hours are very helpful and I decided to go um, and I was a bit nervous, but once I walked into his office, he was like, hi, Amanda, welcome in. What questions do you have? It was just so amazing just to see that, you know, someone cared about me and like wanted me there and like wanted me asking questions and just wanted to make sure that I understood his class and just valued me as a person. So I think that's been great as well. Nice. Those were two awesome stories. So thanks for sharing that. Um, so I'm getting a lot of questions in the chat about experiential learning opportunities, right? So research, internships, study abroad. And I was just wondering if you all could go through and tell us a little bit more about what your experience with experiential learning has been here on campus. Um, and Amanda, why don't we start with you? You talked a little bit about your internship. So maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I have had an internship last year. So when I was a second year, I applied for an internship and did it the summer after my second year. Um, and that has been really helpful because I kind of got that internship because of Northwestern's resources. So something that I touched on at the beginning of this panel is NCA, which is Northwestern Career Advancement, and they are awesome. So when I was doing my resume for the internships that I was applying for, they were able to look through it and give me pointers. Um, and they also run behavioral interviews with you so that you're all brushed up and ready to go. So that has been really great. Um, something else that I'm involved in is an alumni mentoring program through Northwestern. It's called NEXT. Um, it's the Northwestern externship program, actually. So I was paired with an alumni of Northwestern who was also an industrial engineering student, um, but now he is a retired consultant and he just donates his time to me basically to have monthly Zooms with me 
um, and talk about my career goals, uh, help me pick different classes that I'd like to take at Northwestern. And he just really helped expose me to life beyond Northwestern in terms of careers, networking, what to do, things like that. And even just having a personal relationship. He lives in California, so I get to learn cool things about California. Never been there. Um, but just also having that connection with our Northwestern alumni has been really helpful in terms of experiential learning. Uh, for me, I was in a research lab for a time before I ended up realizing that I wasn't really that interested in research. Um, but there's a lot of resources available if you want to get involved in a research lab. Um, what I ended up doing was I went on to various engineering department websites, clicked on the research tab, and um, found a department that did research in an area that I was really interested in. Um, I ended up choosing a biomaterials lab in the material science and engineering department. And then I found, went through their faculty once I decided on a department, looked at their research labs, and then emailed the faculty member. Um, and the lab I ended up joining was really big. So the professor ended up forwarding me on to a different person who dealt more with undergraduate involvement in the lab. Um, but a lot of times the professors themselves will just email you back being like, hey, yes, I'm super interested. Or like, no, I don't really take undergrads. In my experience, it's been like, um, really open to undergraduate involvement. Um, if you are a little like unsure of like what you want to get involved in, um, there's a the Office of Undergraduate Research or UGR has a lot of like workshops available um, that are like online or in person about like how to get involved in a lab, how to choose a research lab, how to find um, like how to do research you're really interested in. There's also a program called the um, URAP or the Undergraduate Research Assistant Program that you can apply to and just do some of the um, more like basic or like quote unquote for lack of a better word grunt work um, in a lab like cleaning um, glassware and stuff like that in a research lab. And I have friends who started in that program, worked as a research assistant and then started working as like an undergrad doing the actual research um, in the same lab. And there's also a bunch of like grants for undergraduate research. So you can like stay over the summer and work in a research lab. That's something that I did and it was really cool. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities and you can do, you don't have to do research in your department. I'm a chemical engineering major and I did material science, biomaterials research. Um, so it's really up to you. Um, I have learned a lot from it. And by doing research, I realized that that's not something I really wanted to do. And academia is not something I want to go into. Um, study abroad um, has been kind of easy to get um, into in the sense that like McCormick has a lot of requirements for it. And um, it's really nice because they make you petition for technical credit, like transfer credit before you leave. Um, so you already know and have to get approval by the department, the professor of the class you're trying to get credit for, um, as well as McCormick undergraduate engineering in general before you can even go abroad. Um, I haven't gone abroad yet. That's the next fall thing. Um, but the process of like trying to get into it and find a time has been really awesome. And my advisor has been um, really great about figuring out a plan and classes to take to make sure that I can graduate on time because I'll be a senior next year. Um and stuff like that. I'm also planning on going abroad next fall, so that'll be really exciting. But just like that process in itself, they've been very helpful, like trying to find, you know, what programs would be the best tailored to whatever your major is and whatnot. Um, I guess as for me, one thing I was really nervous about in regards to like professional development was resume building and like how to like make a resume. I just had no idea how to do that. None of my friends from home were really doing that. Um, so I didn't really feel like I had resources like in my toolkit and then my academic advisor in under Medill he appointed me to like the Medill advisor for career advancement in NCA um, and she just really helped me like format my resume just like from scratch um, and then just like helped me tailor it to like what it was like we had a two-hour zoom call and she just walked me through how to write things where to put 
whatnot. And um, since she has like a journalism background herself, like she knows kind of what employers are looking for. And that was just really helpful um, because she has like, like that own experience. Um, but just that resource in itself, just crafting a resume, crafting cover letters for internships and job applications has been so helpful. Lovely. I'm glad you all have really found your way and had some really cool opportunities and resources and support along the way. The next question reads, is it enriching to have such a diverse student body at Northwestern? We can start with Maria and snake backwards through Jasmine and to Amanda. Oh my gosh, that that was one thing I was really excited for when coming to Northwestern. I just wanted to like break out of the small town bubble. I was so done with it by the end of my senior year in high school. Um, but just having so many different diverse voices, backgrounds, and especially perspectives at this school is really interesting. On our campus, we have um, something that we call the rock and um, it's painted every, you know, every so often, like usually every like week or two weeks, um, displaying some sort Sort of message that a group would want to display um, or kind of communicate in any way. And it just kind of serves as like a testament to free speech on campus. And it's just a really nice way to see like, you know, what's on Northwestern students' minds. And, you know, there's just such a variety of people at this school. And it's definitely a privilege um, when just going through it out your college experience. Yeah, um, I think it's been a positive experience having such a um, diverse student body in terms of like diversity does not really exist in my hometown. Um, we have like kind of a diversity of languages and um, like ethnic origins, um, particularly because there's a lot of opportunities for like migrant work and um, uh, refugee resettlement in the state of South Dakota. Um but meeting people with like different political opinions was really new. Um, meeting people from like cities and urban areas, but also meeting people um, from, uh, I think, honestly, I think just the general continent of Asia was really new um, because just like having that diversity um, was a really new experience, but also really cool. Um, and like meeting, um, hearing people's stories about like where they're from and international students um, was um, a whole body and group of people that I hadn't been exposed to before. Um, uh, so that was like really cool to like learn from them and hear their experiences. One of my closest friends is from Ukraine. She's an international student. Um, and so I do my best to go to the meetings of her club and you Ukraine and just like learn about the food that she loves and um, they love to make and go to events and um, nowadays rallies. Um, and that's a really cool experience. And it's also been really cool to educate people from more urban areas about what being from rural areas like, um, what like different like mentalities from a rural area mean and how they inform like politics and political opinions or opinions of, um like I guess like priorities about like social justice issues and stuff like that um and so like learning new perspectives but also bringing the perspective of being from a rural area has been a really cool experience and it's been fun I think to educate different people about like no, we in fact do not ride bikes into school. Um, but also, like, this is why I grew up with a certain opinion or a certain perspective because, like, we either didn't have exposure or, like, these were the issues um, and things that, like, I was exposed to that other people from, like, more rural or not rural, that people from rural areas were exposed to, but people from more urban areas may not have been. Yeah, I think Jasmine really covered, and Maria really covered the bases there. Um, I will touch on like some of my best friends are international students. I have a friend from India, a friend from Singapore, and it's just been really cool for them to like share their cultures with me. I'm always open to learning. And I think that's really great in terms of food, traditions, ideas, perspectives, literally the possibilities are endless. And something that just like popped into my mind was my friend from India when he first came here, he wanted to bring food back um, and he wanted to try 
my Wisconsin food. So we wanted to film like a little YouTube video of like trying foods for the first time. I don't know why I thought of that. That's just really random. But I think it's just been really great to have genuine connections with people that you would never even imagine meeting from a rural area. And it's just been overall really enhancing of my Northwestern experience. Lovely. Thank you all for sharing. Um, next question is related to tradition. So what are some popular traditions on campus and what is your favorite tradition if you have one? We can start with Maria. Wildcat day at Wrigley Field. That's my favorite tradition. Um, I love baseball. I'm a big Red Sox fan, um, but Northwest every year, Northwestern, like basically like buys out seats at Wrigley Field for the Chicago Cubs baseball game um, for Northwestern students to go and just enjoy the game with their friends. Um, last year, I went with my sports radio station and it was just really fun. I'll never forget that. Um, just being able to like know that like that's a resource you have available to you that's like a fun and like exciting kind of tradition that happens every year um so that was really awesome um there's so many traditions at northwestern it's kind of hard to pick a favorite um i think i really like one of my favorites is um rock the lake it's an event that happens um during usually during walk at welcome so welcome week and orientation week um I think, or at least it did last year. Um, and uh, it basically is kind of a, like, it's a giant performance on the lake fill. So like right next to the lake um, of a bunch of different like student groups, like a lot of dance groups, a lot of music, some comedy and like stand-up groups as well. Um, and so it's a really good and really fun way to experience a lot of the different um, like performing student groups. Um, and uh, I learned that we have a Bangra team and they compete and they do really well. Like they're really good. They're really cool. And that was like a form of dance I hadn't been exposed to that like I didn't know existed. Um, but it was really, really cool. And um, it's just like a fun like evening thing to do. Just kind of just kind of like hang out, relax on the lake with a bunch of other Northwestern students and just cheer on my fellow students and their performances. My favorite tradition on campus is definitely Dillo Day, which are, is our largest run student musical music festival in the entire country. So this is every spring quarter, usually around the end of May. Um, and we have different performers come perform on the lake fill, which is our, I don't know, our strip of land, kind of like a park like setting. Um, and they set up two stages. They have performers from all over the country come to play for us. And it's just a great time with everyone. Um, last year we had Dominic Fike, Tanache, um, we've had Kendrick Lamar in the past. And honestly, it's just like a lot of fun because they close all the libraries for the day. It's free for all students. Everyone goes and just has a great time enjoying the spring weather and listening to some great music. Um, also, one of my favorite parts about it is they have student performers. So <laughs> last year, some of my friends were up on the stage and that was really awesome to see as well. Nice. So the next question, what is the community at Northwestern like in regards through helping you to helping you through tough times? We can also just broaden that and answer the question of what is the community like at Northwestern? Are people collaborative? Are they competitive? All that jazz. So let's start with Amanda this time and then Jasmine and then Maria. Yeah, I think the people at Northwestern overall are so great, um, especially in the engineering school. Everyone's really, really smart. But the thing is, they're very collaborative. They're not competitive. Everyone's willing. You know, if you want to form a study group informally through class, you could literally just reach out to the couple of people sitting around you in class and say, hey, guys, what's your number? Do you want to make a group chat and meet up this weekend to study? Um, and that's just something that I absolutely love because everyone's just so open to bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, and even outside of academics, I have really found community in Northwestern Swim Club. Um, and so I was a swimmer throughout my entire life, high school, and I kind of wanted to continue that as well in college. And that's just been a really great outlet for me to get exercise in, to get clear headed. 
kind of to reset for the day. And I've met some of my best friends in it. My roommate, who's actually on the other side of the wall there, um, I met through Northwestern Swim Club. So that's also just a non-academic way that I've been able to continue something that I enjoyed doing back at home um, at Northwestern and being able to find some really great people there. Uh, similarly to Amanda, because I'm also in the engineering school, it's been really collaborative. Um, I think everyone kind of just collectively realizes that there's not enough time to compete. Um, 10 weeks of class is not a lot of time. Um, it's really nice that like you can take a lot of classes throughout the years at Northwestern with the quarter system, um, but there's not much time to compete with each other. And um, the environment really forces you to collaborate, at least in the engineering school, you um, have to take a design thinking and communication course where you are working in teams. Um, you cannot pass the class if you do not work in teams. Um, a lot of the intro courses in engineering require you to work in teams and groups. Um, and so I think that kind of that beginning expectation of collaborating really helps people um, form groups later on to collaborate um and so i think it also helped that like at least in like 2020 um people were really active in like course group chats so like there would be a group chat for like engineering analysis one or for chemistry and so people would be asking questions in the group chat and people would be collaborating and responding or the introductory biology sequence requires um you to have access to a forum called piazza and you can get extra credit for asking and answering questions on that. And so that kind of fosters um, an environment where people can ask each other questions and they can answer each other's questions. Um, I've also found there's so many student organizations, there's over 500 at Northwestern. So um, it's pretty much guaranteed you'll find at least one student group that um, you find a community in and feel um, that you belong in. And if not, it's really simple um, to create one. And um, so I found um, a really good space in like identity based groups, as well as like um, non academic groups that like do things that like I also want to do, like service. Um, so through Western. Um, it's a hobby of mine that I really like to crochet. And so finding um, like a crafting community on campus um, has been really cool. And it's there's a lot of like overlap um, between communities. So a lot of the students in Knit Western are also in Bridge Club. Um, or um, a lot of the students at the Newman Center are somewhat ironically engineers. Um, and so like there's like a lot of... Um, overlap between that and there it's not really like separate groups so even between like non-academic groups and majors and schools there's a lot of like collaboration and I guess like intermixing yeah for sure I think that collaboration is really like at the heart of a lot of clubs on campus um as for me just with like Northwestern News Network last year coming on to the scene like having no broadcast or journalism experience um, a lot of the upperclassmen like wanted to mentor and help and like this year I find myself doing the same and like passing down the torch like showing people how to like work cameras or work a program or something like that um, and I think like in their interim you just find those like people who are your anchors um, and just kind of to go to when you need support or you even have a question um, one of my friends was um, asking me the other day like hey Maria like by any chance did you take like this prerequisite course like in computer science and I'm like yeah like if you need help with Python like let me know I really liked that course um, so I think just you find like a lot of different inner workings um, and it just makes it a lot easier to navigate the school because of just how collaborative um, Northwestern Wildcats are. Awesome lovely um, so our final question of the night is why Northwestern? I think it's one of my favorite ways to end every panel because it is our final optional supplement question, right? So for each one of you, what were those reasons that drew you to Northwestern and what are the reasons that kind of keep you here? Um, and we can start with Maria. Yeah, the middle school journalism is why Northwestern for me, just the opportunities within it, not only like the basis curriculum, starting you off just with the basic 
journalism principles, um, no matter how much experience you have, and then being able to get involved into different publications on campus and really just work within the Evanston community and also even go into Chicago sometimes covering different news. So that is definitely my why Northwestern. Um, my way Northwestern is um, really basic, um, the financial aid. Um, it's still in the Midwest and it has chemical engineering, um, which is not that common of a major. Um, and so the fact that like that was all combined into one school, um, as well as that, like it was still within like my same region was really important. And I guess what keeps me here is the environment, the people and the support, as well as like the community I found. I don't think I would have found it anywhere else. Um, and so that's been like really important for me. For me in high school, I like I said, I always loved math and science. So I really wanted to give engineering a try. Um, and so I love Northwestern's engineering program. There were so many different majors to pick from. But also beyond that, in high school, I was involved in a lot of sports. And I also played flute and band. So I value that um, athletics as well as the arts. Um, and I also didn't know if I wanted to continue that in college. And so when looking at Northwestern, it kind of just had everything. It had the engineering, but it also had the club and intramural sports. It had the Big Ten sporting events that I could go to for free. Every student can go to our <laughs> athletic events for free, which I thought was great, as well as the arts, the opportunity to go see a show or get involved in a music group on campus. That really just resonated with me. Um, and then when I physically toured here, I also fell in love with the campus. It's so beautiful. I'm from a um, place where there's a lot of nature. I literally live in the middle of a bunch of trees. So just having like a beautiful naturalistic campus with the lake and trees and the buildings really just set it in stone for me that I needed to go here. And it's been amazing ever since. The people, the campus, how much fun I have, how much I've learned um, has really kept me here. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. We're so happy to be able to have you here and share a little bit more about the Northwestern experience with you all at home. And a big special thank you to all of our panelists who shared um, tonight. It was really, really great to have you all here. Um, and so with that, I'm going to have us all wave goodbye to the people at home and we're going to log off. So thanks again for joining us tonight. <laughs>